you know, not not as, I mean, nothing technically. You know, I think where I think we're at as far as what we're doing schematically. Like I said before, I think we're we're making the steps that we need to make. Um, you know, I'm really impressed right now with their willingness to compete every time. Every, every sorry about sorry. that. <laughs> every time that we go out there and we're trying to, you know, give them different situations, whether it be red zone or third down. They're trying to win the drill, which is really encouraging to see, but they're also trying to win their individual job. So um, their work ethic is there. Uh, their fight is ex especially there. They were enthusiastic today after we jumped on them a little bit. So they're responding, and that's what you want to see. The, uh, the boundary safety spot, I know you have some competition going on there. What, what does that look like right now between Pat and Javante? They're battling it out. Uh, they are battling it out. I think, you know, Pat didn't take as many reps as, uh, you know, Javante did last spring. He's making, I think he's closing the gap a little bit, but it's just back and forth every day. You know, Pat hasn't done anything right now to, to take the job over, um, but he's, you know, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's just got to continue to, to make steps and, and make the plays he's supposed to make. And then again, feel him. We got to feel him out there. And, you know, the other guy at that position is Jordan Whitehead. Uh, we can't forget about him. Uh, he's, you know, had a little bit of a um, lesser day to day in terms of, you know, thinking what he was doing as far as skills and stuff. but. He's getting there. He's getting there. With Javante, I mean, did he use the summer the way you'd like to see a guy like that uh, you know, use his summertime? Yeah, he did. I mean, he's a guy that came in. I thought he was in really, really good shape. He was uh, ready to go, you know, athletically. Uh, mentally, he was there, and he's brought it every single day. How is Dennis Briggs coming along, especially having a spring under his belt in a week of fall camp? You know, I've said this before, too. Dennis has a really specific skill set at the star position for us in our third down package. He's really explosive in short area. Does a nice job of pressuring, does a nice job of blitzing, but he's also athletic enough that he can cover. And the one thing, probably the most impressive thing that I've seen with, uh, with, with Dennis is the fact that he's really grown as a corner too. And, and he's actually pushing that two spot, that third corner, I guess you would say. He's pressing that position. Um, and those guys feel him you know, at that one spot and that two spot. What's the next step for Jordan as far as you know, getting into the rotation? Next step for him is just getting it down mentally. You know, physically he has the skill set. Uh, you know, the college game is different though, because it's just the workload over the course of time. He's got to learn to take care of himself. Um, but mentally, as long as he can push through that barrier, that he'll hit probably Wednesday or Thursday, I think. Uh, you know, because we're going to keep adding defense in. If he can push through that, uh, he'll have a chance, I think, to give us quality reps even maybe that first week. Why do, why do you think that Dennis could make the conversion from running back? I think he's a smart guy. I think he's a gifted football player. Uh, I think he's got a feel for the game. And, you know, he's, he just took the skill set over there as far as a running back, you know, a change of direction, like I said, short area quickness. Um, but it, his approach is, you know, he's a humble guy. I, I love his, his approach. He's a humble guy. He approaches it the right way. He just does what he's told, very quiet, um, but takes in everything you're saying all the time and really tries to apply it. And I didn't know if he would get there after, after spring ball, but he has. And we just got to continue to, you know, help teach him how to become more, more of a production player at that position. Jordan, just for another question. To see a guy with as much physical you know, natural talent as he has, can that offset a little bit some of the mental stuff as far as understanding the defense, or is it is it got to be the understanding first before you can kind of rely on the physical yeah. tools? I'll tell you this. I know when you go out and you get into a situation where you, you do a live scrimmage and you look at his grade sheet, his technique was not always perfect. His alignment, his assignment was not always perfect but he had a lot of production points. And so at the end of the day, to answer your question, production is always going to be the number one key factor. If you can make up for it, as long as you're not hurting and you're not giving up the critical errors or the, the big plays, production is what makes the most difference. So the guys that produce are going to be on the field. Are you still installing a lot of defense or kind of moving past that part? No, we are installing, you know, we're going to keep installing, especially our Delta package. I mean, you know as well as I do that we are pretty basic on first and second down. We've got most of that package in, but our third down package is where we get creative and get to open up, you know, our uh, our creative side and, and just keep putting in coverages and combo coverages and our our pressure package, all that stuff. And they've handled it, so as long as they're handling it, we're going to keep, you know, giving it to them because it's just going to make us better as we get into the season.